Anyways, hi. Hi. Thank you so much for doing this. Yeah, of course. Thank you for having me. This is sick, and I'm sorry again that I'm late. <laughs> It's okay. It's okay. I like your cure poster on your in your back. Oh, thank you. I have <laughs> a bunch of posters on my wall. Oh, social distortion back there. Sex. Very cool. <laughs> yep. Awesome. Yeah. So our podcast is about your journey in music and how you got to where you are now. Um, cool. I did read you're from Dallas. I am. Yes. Tell me about that. What part of Dallas? Um. So I'm originally from Richardson, and I grew up in Richardson until I was 15. Um, and then I moved to this small town outside of San Antonio. And I lived there for a year. And then mm -hmm. I moved out to LA when I was like 16. Oh, wow, okay. 17, yeah. Very cool. How did you get into music? Um, I've always loved music. Like I always, like I sang in my talent shows. Um, I sang in the church choir. I did choir at school. I always loved music. And I, I used to make videos on this app called Keek, um, mm -hmm. which was like Instagram videos before Instagram had videos. Um, and one of my videos from Keek, I guess like someone uploaded to YouTube and my manager actually saw that video and then asked me to like come out to LA and wow. sing for him and it was like so weird because I never like sang in front of anyone I used to make my singing videos literally like in my backyard or like in my room <laughs> when no one was home because I never wanted anyone to hear me <laughs> so it was really weird and like singing on a mic and stuff for the first time it was really weird but um yeah that's how wow. it like came kind to of, be came to be wow okay so this app Keek was that's like was that like Vine or is this pre Vine? Yeah, it's even pre Vine. It was in like I want to say 2012 okay. that I started using Keek. Um, and yeah, it was like I don't even remember how long the videos were, they were like 12 seconds or something. I want to okay. say, yeah, it was like literally pre Vine. Um, and it was basically, yeah, just an app. Um, for videos because Instagram didn't have videos yet. Okay. Wow. Yeah. So, so in 12 seconds, your manager hears this and goes, wow, I want to meet this girl. I guess so. It was, <laughs> the, and it's funny because I, I did so many singing videos for real on Keek, but this singing video was like me messing around. Like my friend took it of me and I'm like singing the national anthem, but it's like, jokes like it's purely jokes but there's like a few notes that i actually hit and then, <laughs> okay. from, and then from there he was like wait i think this girl can really sing and yeah wow were you writing songs at this point or was it all just kind of doing covers on online it was all covers online i i did write a little bit um just like terribly terribly writing mm -hmm. <laughs> um in my journal when i was like really young it wasn't good at all uh, but I, I used to write poetry a lot. So I okay. think that that's how I even know it all how to write, <laughs> but it like, wasn't, it wasn't good. Okay. Okay. You yeah. said you went to, you got to LA at, at what? 16? 16. Yeah. What took you to, to Los Angeles? Was that the call from yeah. the manager? Whoa. Okay. Were you yeah. still in high school at this point? I was, I was, um, I was a junior. So I only went to school for like a week, my junior year. And then I started coming out to LA and then I just moved and was like, wow. Peace. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Well, so obviously your family is supportive enough to say, yeah, you can go, you can stop going to high school and, and, and start heading out to Los Angeles. I did finish school. I, I did online schooling, but I did finish Okay. But um, yeah, I, I moved out to LA when I was 16. Um, and then I just finished out in LA. Yeah. Did they, so they, they, were, they obviously were supportive of, of this career path you chose. Yeah, really crazy. But they, yeah. Are your family, are your parents musicians at all? Or did they have any? No, not at all. What you were trying to do? No, they. <laughs> Well, my parents are just, I don't know. They're like very, very supportive. And I did not have a good time in Texas. So I think that they just, 
they just saw that I like genuinely enjoyed doing something. So they were just like, go do it. Because I mean, I ran track and I was like really, really good at track and I was good at running, but like, I hated it. I hated Mm. it so much. (laughs) And I think that when my parents saw me actually have like a passion for something, um, they just like, didn't want to restrict me from it at all. And they were just like, go do it. Like you're actually passionate about something. All right, cool. Like go do it. Okay. So you, yeah. so you make it out to LA, you're 16 years old and you meet this manager. Mm-hmm. And what, what was, what happens next? Do you start writing with people? Do you, you talked about singing a microphone for the first time? Yeah. So I met him. Yeah. I sang in like a studio for the first time. Okay. Uh, and I've never been in like a studio, which was, it was so weird. And like, putting on the headphones and like hearing yourself. I don't know. It was all just so weird and cool to me. Um, so I like sang a song in the studio and that song was actually a couple of kids, which I ended up putting out later on. But, um, that was like the first song I ever sang in a studio, which was really cool. Wow. Uh, but yeah so then we just started from then on we were just like he was like okay cool i'm gonna manage you and that's that and then we just (laughs) have been literally like working ever since like i was in a bunch of vocal lessons i did vocal lessons like once a week twice a week Mm -hmm. um i used to do like piano lessons just like literally so many musical lessons to try to like get me in this new world, like get me feeling comfortable Mm -hmm. um, until I actually started releasing music. But I didn't start writing a lot until later on. Okay. So tell me, okay, with with a couple of kids, was that a song that he already had and was like, hey, can you, you know, do you want to sing this? Like, tell me about that. Yeah, so yeah, he, he already had that song and he was just like, I think this song is like perfect for you, whatever. So, um, we got that song. I like obviously changed it, how I felt fit me more personally, Mm -hmm. but, um, yeah. So he like, was like, here's the song, sing it. I loved the song. Um, and it was going to be the first song I put out, but then we got, uh, we did, knocking on your heart which ended up being the first one um and then a couple of kids came second but it was the first one i ever actually did recorded yeah yeah knocking on your heart did really well too right the first song yeah. you put out so yeah talk to me about that that's crazy yeah it was it was really wild um that was so long ago it was like uh yeah it, it came out and i think it charted on like all um on like iTunes alt charts, which was like really, really cool. Um, and yeah, I was like, I don't, was I like 16 or 17 when that came out? Oh, it's so weird. When I listen to that song now, I'm like, oh, my voice. It sounds so like childish. I don't know. <laughs> so weird. So weird. So you, but still, I mean, putting it out and making that the, the alternative charts top 20 on iTunes. Like, was that some, did it get playlisted almost right away? Or how, how are people finding it? Honestly, I don't even know. That was such a crazy moment for me. Um, I just remember being so excited and like alt also, like I always wanted to do like alternative music. Mm-hmm. So it charting on an alt, on the alt charts. I don't know, it was just really cool to me. Like I was so hype and I just felt so cool. Sure. And I don't even remember, I don't even know. I don't even know how it all happened. <laughs> I was so new to it. Like I didn't know what anything meant. I just saw it like doing well and I was like, cool. All right, yeah, cool. that's, that's yeah. awesome. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so that song starts doing well. Um, what, what happened next? Um, I mean, I just kept, working and then um the manager was just like do you still like a couple of kids like do you still want to do this and I was like yes I do because I remember like there was such a high at the time it felt like such a high note in that song Mm -hmm. and I went to vocal lessons so often to hit that high note 
like the high notes in that song mm -hmm. and it's so funny looking back because it's like not that high but I like couldn't hit it and I just practiced so much and so when I did record it and I like did it I was like yes like we need to put this song out so sick so we mm -hmm. ended up putting that song out um I was also like 16 or 17 at that time and it, it's crazy because that song still does really well randomly like mm -hmm. on my spotify um it's like one of my most streamed songs um which is like so random to me <laughs> but yeah i still like that song it's it's really crazy though because i i don't know it's just like so old so i don't know it's so weird yeah and then well that was the next song was the next song you put up Pretty girl, when did tell me about putting that song? Because that's the one that kind of went yeah really crazy for you, right? Yeah, it was. So that was on okay. Three Hundred Entertainment. Like, yeah, did you sign to them prior to putting that out, or was that after? So we actually had the song, and that's a song we were like, my manager just felt really, really. Calm. It's crazy because I liked the song, but like my manager was like, no, this song is like it. I promise. Like the song is really good. And I was like, okay, like I believe you. And so that's the song we like took to labels. Um, cause I, I had been independent up till that point. Um, and then when I signed to, then I signed to 300 and then we put it out. Um, and then yeah then we cheat codes is also signed to 300 okay. so um they had asked them to like do a remix on it and then um Cade who is like so sick too is also on the song and they both like remixed it and then it just started blowing up and that was like the most I still like can't comprehend how that many people have listened to my voice like it's so weird when I when I see it on Spotify like my mind is just like uh what like this doesn't make sense yeah. but um yeah it's crazy that song started blowing up I know it like blew up on TikTok and then when I went over to the UK because I, I know like dance music is really big in the UK mm -hmm. Uh, so when I went to the UK one time, it was crazy. I got into an Uber and it was literally playing on the radio, like as I got in the Uber. Oh my and gosh. I, and at that moment, it was like, I think that was like the moment I was like, holy shit, like this is crazy. And now anytime I do any performances anywhere, it's like that song comes on and people are like, yeah, like I just oh, yeah. <laughs> And it's just so, it's really weird, but it, I don't know. That's a really, really, really surreal one to me. Yeah, that's funny that you you talked about not being able to fathom how many people that is. Before you caught on, I was talking to Jack about that. I said, you know, Pretty Girl, I'm looking at the song on, on Maggie's Spotify, has like almost 700 million plays. I said, yeah. it's so hard to like, I'm in San Diego. I was telling Zach, or Jack, I said, there's like 3 million people in San Diego. Like, and that's every person and you have 700 million plays on one song like it's it's so crazy to even try to like wrap your head around that yeah <laughs> no my mind is like 700 million like 7,000 cool. yeah it's so, <laughs> like it's, i just can't comprehend it it's so insane that's so yeah. awesome though wow so so yeah so this song is going crazy and then what what happens from there you talked about going to U the uk and getting into a an uber and they're playing the song are you touring and, and performing all over the place at this point uh so i was in the uk a lot at this time because um it was popping off a lot over there so i uh -huh. would go i would go and see my label over there a lot um and i then two years ago i toured with the vamps um, oh, over cool. there yeah so i was i was i used to be in the uk a lot like i used to want to live there so bad because i was like i'm here so much like i just need to live here and like <laughs> my music is way bigger over here i'm like let me just move here uh but yeah i was i was over there a lot um and then i yeah i just like visited it wasn't even all for touring like i just would have to go to do like mm. you know like press or like photo shoots or stuff like that um but then i did like i did um just like a 
small tour of my own in the US. Mm -hmm. I think in like, two, I wanna say 2017 or 2016. 2016, I don't know. The, my years are so jumbled. 2016, I think. Mm -hmm. And um, that was really cool because that was like right when Pretty Girl and Obsessed were out. So I was like touring with those, but it was like really small tours, like just pop up shows. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. cool. And then, and from there, have you done like a supporting tours or like what was like the bigger tours that you have done? Yeah. So I toured last year with Sabrina Carpenter. I opened up for her in the US. Mm -hmm. um, and that was really fun. That was my first time doing like an actual tour in the US. So that was like really, really, really cool. Um, and then, yeah, I did the Vamps thing two years ago where I was just like, I came out and sang our song together and then I sang Pretty Girl. And then I was just doing a lot of like performances over there. Um, like I did something in Norway. Um, cool. Yeah, which was like my first ever like big thing. There was like a hundred thousand people there, which was so Whoa. weird. I had never done anything like that. <laughs> they were just like, hey, you're gonna go and perform for this like, you know, thing. There's like a lot of people that go and yeah, you're just gonna like sing. And then I get there and there's like a hundred thousand people and I'm like, holy shit, I, I practiced for like one day. <laughs> like, oh no. Uh -oh. But and it was really it. Cool. it was cool. My mic wasn't working at first. Oh my and gosh. I, I just remember being so scared. I was like, oh my God, like my mic's not working. But I could hear everyone singing along. And that's it was really good. Cool. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> yeah, cool. I was like, I don't even need to sing it. Right, right, exactly. Notice. <laughs> yeah, it was what? really crazy. This okay. I just thought of this right now. So you said you walked out to a hundred thousand people to sing that song. Yeah. Now think of the fact that your song has seven hundred million plays. Like, it just doesn't make like sense. A <laughs> hundred. That's like one hundred thousand is such a small fragment of seven hundred million. But like that, I don't know. It's so crazy. It's so crazy. <laughs> I know. Like I'm, I'm trying to imagine like me just standing on stage with like a seven seven hundred million people around me, and I'm like, I. I can't. No. I would drop dead. Like yeah. I wouldn't be able to. I wouldn't be able to do that. <laughs> no way. That's so nuts. So, um, you put out two songs this year so far: uh, "Knife Under My Pillow" and the newest one, "Gaslight." Yeah. Okay. Um, were those songs written prior or re written recorded prior to the whole coronavirus shutting down everything? And and how did that affect you? Uh, so Knife was written, like, last year, the end of last year, so that one was before, um, but Gaslight, yeah, we, me and my friend literally just were like, dude, we should just do a song together, <laughs> and then we were like, alright, cool, I'm gonna text my producer, and then we just went and literally did it, <laughs> uh, so it didn't really have much thought behind it, but yeah, it's been weird with COVID because most of my sessions have been like Zoom sessions, which I don't love because you don't feel the energy, you right. know, like over, over Zoom, you just don't get the same energy. But um, I mean, it's still cool though, because a lot of sessions I do with people like one girl I work with a lot, Alex, she, she lives in Australia. So I would only be able to like write with her when she was in town. Mm. So it's really cool now because we can just work whenever and she's just like there. Sure. <laughs> but other than that, I don't know. I just hate COVID in general. I, I like miss like being around people and not feeling so weird and like need to put my mask on. And I don't know. I just, I miss life. <laughs> yeah. So uh... weird. Well, tell me a little bit about the that song. The newest one is the one that has Sick Brain on it, right? Uh, yeah. Gaslight. Tell me about Gaslight. Is that the song you guys wrote during COVID? Yeah, that's the song we wrote during COVID. We, we're just, like, really good friends in real life. And um, I've literally always wanted to make a Screamo song. Mm -hmm. So she, like, does that. And I was just like, dude, we should just, like, go to the studio and just do something crazy. And she's like, yeah, I'm down. So we just went and literally wrote it in like four hours, like fin completely finished it in four hours, not just wrote it. Wow. And then we, he sent it to us like when we were still in the studio and then we just like listened to it nonstop. And then 
I was just like, dude, I'm going to put this out. <laughs> this is <laughs> sick. And she was like, okay, cool. And then that was kind of that. Wow. That, that song was really, really quick. Yeah. Um, is that, you, it sounds like that was just kind of like a one-off single. Are you working on like an EP or a record or anything? Yeah, I have an EP coming out uh, January 2021 on the 22nd. Okay. Um, and will those songs be on it? Yeah, they will. Okay. And what about yeah. anything earlier? Like the you did Friends Go and you had Travis Barker on that song. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I'm not having – it's all new music. Okay. Um, yeah, so it's going to be all new stuff, but – I was debating if I should put the Travis one on just because that song is so cool. Oh, it's so good. I know. Tell me about having to get, like, did you get to work directly with Travis? Because I know you yeah, have to I did. on him. Yeah, I did. So I um, basically went to New York to do the showcase for um, – my label at the time and mm -hmm. and uh i performed friends go for them for the first time and they immediately like called travis and they just called me into the other room and were like we have someone on the phone for you and he was just like i love this song i want to do drums on it like i want to do a, a remix of it Whoa. and i was like uh yeah <laughs> obviously <laughs> for sure like i'm not gonna tell you no and then we um flew back to LA and went to his studio and he literally got on the drums and finished the song the first time like the first pass he did was amazing but we had like we had like drove over there and we were like oh we literally thought this was gonna be like an all-day thing like we brought Aww. we brought like a camera and stuff and we we're like oh we thought this was gonna be like you know all day so we were just like, uh, can you just like maybe do it a couple more times? And he did it like <laughs> two more times and it was equally as insane. Sure. And we were like, okay, I think we're done. <laughs> I think that's Thanks. it. <laughs> yeah, I, I think we're good. That's so funny. Well, that's rather you got to go over there and check it. I wasn't sure if it was one of those things where he heard it and was like, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll put drums on it and just sent it back to you. But the fact that oh, you yeah. got to go there and, no, and, I got to go. and hang and everything, that's really rad. Yeah, it was sick. That's so Crazy. sick. Very cool. Uh, yeah. Well, as far as like getting your music out there, do you, how do you feel about like live streams or anything like that? Have you done any of those? I haven't done any yet. I did this like um, a, like a Zoom session with a couple fans like a couple months ago when COVID like had first started. Um, but I haven't done anything like performance wise really uh i'm going to though i have a few stuff lined up and then i think once in if we're still like heavy in covid by the time it drops like i want to do some kind of like live stream listening party or like oh cool just like something cool like that i feel like would be sick i don't know the world is so weird right <laughs> it's now so but in the air. <laughs> it's so weird but there's i mean i'm saying like what Travis Scott did on the uh, on Fortnite, like his oh, yeah. like thing, uh -huh. that was so sick. And we're like kind of talking about doing something like kind of similar like that with, you know, like a hologram or like three D oh, cool. something. Just because yeah. I don't know, that was so cool. And I don't know, something like that would be sick. But yeah, definitely like talking about stuff. But nothing, nothing in stone yet. Yeah. Very cool. Well, thank you so much, Maggie, for talking with me today. I really, really appreciate it. This has been awesome. Yeah, of course. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, I do have one Sorry more question. Sorry I was late again. But... Oh, <laughs> it's okay. It's sick. No worries. Um, I want to know if you have any advice for aspiring artists. Yeah, I would say just trust your gut and do not listen to literally what anyone else has to say because if you think something's dope, then – like just keep going with that and don't try to like change something so it sounds more you know mainstream or like what other people are doing because there's already those people out there and you know um the you want to be yourself and just stay true to yourself and like be your own individual self like don't try to sound like anyone else just be you and um yeah just don't listen to what anyone else says because 
your gut is usually right. So 